Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles and I have um, another super cute one page wonder for us today. So let me show you what we're gonna make. This, um, I used a sweet little vintage button for the closure, isn't that cute? Um, this one opens up with a double flap. There is a little card in here and then it has an expandable pocket guys can see that so you have lots and lots of space to put all kinds of things inside um this is not an original idea i've watched quite a few videos on making similar type um little pockets and folios um but mine is a little different in that i got a request from some of my viewers um that are not in the united states to um do some one page wonders using centimeters instead of inches and um Anne in particular from Germany asked me if I could do that and I'm going to give it a shot. I am outside of my comfort zone, you guys. I realized right in the middle of doing this project that my scoreboard, you know, doesn't even have centimeters on it. And anyway, it was a little crazy, but if you guys stick with me, um, we'll get through it and I hope you guys enjoy it. And for those of you that are used to me, of course, using the traditional inches and quarter inch and all of that, um... I hope you'll try this one. Centimeters are actually pretty easy to work with. Um, my, my issue is not not all my tools um, have that, but I've got workarounds that are actually easy just using a ruler and a um, bone folder for some of the scoring. So anyway, I hope this is of interest and you guys enjoy it. Um, so let's just get started. So the size piece of paper that I'm gonna work with is actually 25 centimeters by 16 centimeters, okay? Now, I cut this from a, an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, okay? And initially, I thought, okay, well, let's do 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters, and I realized that this strip it ends up just being left over anyway. So find a piece of paper, cut it to 25 by 16 centimeters, and you're going to be good to go. Um, and then save, save any other pieces for a different project or to use to decorate and embellish later. Okay, so again, this is 16 centimeters by... 25 centimeters. So the first thing you want to do on that 16 centimeter side, cut it in half. So you're going to cut it at eight centimeters. Okay. So this piece, and I did not print mine on both sides. You can use double-sided paper and it would look really cute. Um, I didn't on this one either. And so I just ended up, I left the white inside, and then the this layer, I just layered some paper over. So I'll show you how to do that. There's also a way to do the gussets so that you don't see the white paper. Um, but if you have two-sided paper, go for it. Okay, so we've just cut on the 16-inch side at eight inches, so we now have an eight by 25 centimeter piece of paper. And then, Take the other one, and what I want you to do is cut the cut um, one piece off at seven and a half centimeters. No, wait, this is not seven and a half centimeters. Give me just a second. Oh, I think this is actually just the leftover piece. This is the leftover piece. Um, so the first thing you want to do, forgive me, cut it off. Cut this strip at eight centimeters. I was trying to keep the centimeters and what we were doing really easy. So cut one piece off at eight centimeters. So you have an eight by eight square and then cut it in half at four centimeters. So now you have two little pieces that are four centimeters by eight centimeters. Okay, we're gonna double check that since I already misspoke once. Yep, eight centimeters by four, so two that are eight by four. And then with the piece of paper that is left, you are going to cut 
this one at seven and a half centimeters, which leaves you with the piece that is nine and a half centimeters. And we're gonna use that maybe to make a little journaling card or something like I did for this one on the inside. So that's your extra piece that you can use. So set that aside. All you need to make this sweet little pocket thingy are these four pieces of paper, okay? Now, this is where it gets a little fun because my scoreboard does not um, have centimeters. I'm going to turn this over onto the white side so that it's easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. And this is also one of the reasons that I wanted to use paper that has white on the other side. Now, my ruler does have centimeters marked very easily for us. I'm going to use a pencil and show you how I'm going to do this. So on the um, 25 inch side of the piece that is eight centimeters by 25 centimeters. And if I accidentally say inches, please forgive me. Okay, <laughs> on this piece, we want to score it at three centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 20 and a half centimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little mark at three, at 12, 12 and at 20 and a half centimeters. And I'm gonna just drop my ruler down and mark again at three, 12 and 20 and a half. I just wanna make sure that when I go to score, I get my scores nice and straight. So I'm holding my paper very still. I'm gonna lay the ruler. I don't know if you guys can see the score marks, but they're right there. And I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm just gonna score. Make sure I don't wiggle my paper. I guess it really matters, but it makes me feel better if I don't wiggle it. Line up again with those little marks I made and score at 12 centimeters. And then this is the 20 and a half centimeters. Okay, so those are scored. All right, so set that aside because we are also gonna score um, these fellas. So this is gonna be the pocket on the front and this one is eight centimeters by seven and a half centimeters. So, on the eight centimeter side, let me flip it over, on the eight centimeter side, you are going to score, again, we're gonna mark with the ruler. And this one's a little bit fiddly because I'm doing some really little tiny, tiny folds, but we're gonna score, my pencil keeps, at a half a centimeter and at seven and a half centimeters. So again, I'm doing at least two little marks. Sometimes I'll even do three. Why not, right? Now we're gonna score these two and then we're gonna turn our paper and score one more side. And I'm gonna trust my marks, not what looks straight to me with my grid paper. I'm just gonna trust the marks. Okay, I got those two and then turn it. And now we are on the seven and a half centimeter side. Okay, and again, we are gonna score at a half a centimeter and then at seven centimeters. And basically that means um, for this pocket, we're gonna fold over a half a centimeter on three sides. Okay, score pan. Okay, so holding it nice and steady. And if you have a scoreboard that has centimeters, you know, use your scoreboard <laughs> if you would like to. Okay, now we have scored Oh, I was only supposed to score that on one side. Guys, you only need to score three sides of your pocket. I scored all four. Forgive me, don't do that. It's not the end of the world. But you only need to do three sides. Um, set that aside and then I'll show you how we're gonna fold and trim it up. I wanna do all the scoring first. Now we're gonna need to score these little guys. These are the ones 
that are four centimeters by eight centimeters. And this is gonna be our gusset. Now this one's actually pretty easy. We're gonna score at one centimeter, two centimeters, and three centimeters. So one, two, three. And we're gonna do them both the exact same way. So you're gonna get the chance to watch me do this twice. <laughs> or you can fast forward if you don't wanna watch me do it twice. Okay. So one, or I mean two, three, and four. No, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Um, I will have all of the measurements and the scoring for you in the description so that you can refer to that when you're crafting and um, it'll be easy, easy for you to follow me, I hope. One, two, and three. So you're going to, again, score this one the same way as you did the first one. Okay, one, two, three. And hopefully I got those straight. All right, that's all the scoring. Yay. All right, so let's let's do these first. Um, if your paper is only has the design on one side and, and white, you want the white to end up being up, I guess. I don't know. You're gonna do is a accordion fold and whichever side of the paper is is what I consider the inside because when I'm holding it this is white right so this side whatever is on this side when you hold your paper like that that's what's going to show um on your folder so if you wanted the white to show for example we would fold our paper this way I hope that's making sense. And then when you attach it, then the white would show, but I don't want that. So if you are using double-sided paper, think about which paper you want to see in your um, gusset, okay? I think that's the word for this. So fold them both the same way. Do try to make sure you're getting it nice and straight. You'll have a better finished product if it is nice and straight. Okay, so you have two like that, so just set those aside. Now this is the one where I did one extra um, scoring that I needed to. So you want to um, fold up three of the sides. Now, how you know which one, um, this is going to fit on your pocket on your folder. So this is the eight centimeter side and that is, um, and this is the seven and a half centimeter side. So on the, let me see how to explain that. Um, the eight centimeter side, you're going to fold one side in each and then the bottom is on that, um, seven and a half centimeter side. What ends up happening when you fold this up, this will help explain that, is now your pocket is going to be seven centimeters by seven centimeters. So I hope that made sense. I am gonna miter the corners. And even though I scored the top of my pocket, I'm not gonna fold it over, okay? Hopefully, um, I caught you guys before you did that, but but if if you did again, just don't just don't fold it over, and you'll be okay. All right, I am going to use a circle punch, and I'm just gonna eyeball the center and make a notch because I like that on this pocket. I think it's cute. All right, and this is all these I'm gonna ink here in a second. All right, this is your main pocket, and again, we've already scored it. So when you're folding your scores, just make sure everything is nice and straight. All right, now, um,
you, you now have it folded and we know we want um, two flaps and one of them has to go backwards. So that your larger one, the one that is um, four and a half centimeters, that one is gonna come down and then you're gonna fold up and then this one back over top of it. So let's do that again. If you're holding your paper with the white side up, the larger section here is at the bottom. So fold up, fold the larger section down, and then the smaller section down, and you'll get that nice um, tiered flap look. Okay? All right, I did round the corners of mine. This is optional. You don't have to, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that's what I did on my prototype. Um, I'm using a quarter inch corner rounder. Okay, so now everything is folded up and I'm just gonna quickly ink around the edges. This is again optional. Um, if you wanna ink yours or not, I love to ink and I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Oxide. Um, use whatever color you have or that you want. And if you marked yours like I did, you could go through and um, erase those little marks. But as soon as I put the ink on there, I don't even see them anymore. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so ink as much or as little as you like. That looks cute. Now these, um, I'm gonna ink just a little bit too. Um, not necessary, but I'm just gonna do it really quick. And again, you're gonna see in, in mind the pattern side. Um, that's the piece you're gonna see. Just get a little bit of the white off of there. And now for the pocket, this one, because I use, you know, I'm using, this is a one sheet wonder, right? Um, it's the same pattern throughout the pocket. So I do think inking around these edges does make this pocket pop. I also went back and layered some other little papers on here. And in fact, I didn't even show you guys this, but I actually made that into a little pocket too. I just forgot to put something in there. Um, not necessary. It just gives you a little extra tuck spot if you want it. There we go. See? How cute. Um, and it kind of helped break up this pattern, but that, that again is all optional, just decorating. I don't want to see the bright white, so I'm sure I'll either do book page or some pattern paper or something um, to cover that up here in a minute. Okay, so we folded my pocket back up, and we're just going to glue um, on these little flaps. So just add a little bit of glue. I am using a wet white glue. This is... Um, the Line Co. PVA glue. If you want to see what supplies and tools I use, I do have an Amazon storefront, and that's linked in the description of my videos as well, so you can go check that out if you're in the market for some new supplies or you want to see what I'm using. Okay. There we go. How cute. All right, so now we're going to put our gussets in. So open your folio all the way up and we're gonna be gluing them to this panel right here. Now, how, how do you wanna glue them? Well, I want my pattern paper to show, so I'm gluing mine um, this way. Um, it's best, you, you wanna have um, in your accordion fold, this is the mountain. You want the mountain facing out. So if you wanted the white to show, you still wouldn't put it in this way. You, you just don't get as much room in your pocket. You would wanna reverse the fold like I showed you earlier. You would reverse the fold. And again, you would have the mountain facing out. Okay, so whichever side of the paper you wanna show, 
have the mountain facing out. All right. Now, I am going to add glue to um, one, one of the sides. And again, make sure I turn it with the mountain facing out. And I'm going to line this up. I put it right up to the um, fold line. If you guys can see that, it's right here. Right up to that fold line. I could have inked that to show you. So that it's going to fit nice and snug in here. Okay. Cute. But before we glue that side, you want to put this side down. So again, make sure your mountain is facing out. And then add your glue to the side that's going to be on this panel. And get it as straight as you can because it will make a big difference in your finished product. Let me open that up so you guys can see. I, I got it pretty close to the edge and nice and straight. Okay, and then fold those back up. And now you're just gonna add glue to these two panels and we're gonna close it up. Okay, now you could use, if you wanted like a two-sided tape, I don't know that I'd use a glue stick. I don't know if that would be sturdy enough. Um, but again, just kind of hold them down and then get it as straight as you can on here. Now, I think you're gonna see mine has a little teeny sliver right there that's showing. Um, I didn't get it perfectly straight. You can kind of fiddle with it just a little bit at this stage, but this is where your distressed ink kind of fixes everything. If you wanna take your scissors and try to trim that just a touch, you could but I'm okay with the Distress Ink covering it up. Okay, and it goes that way. Very cute. And that's your basic construction. We did it. And we did it in centimeters. <laughs> okay. Um, now, when I am layering, I, I did get out some scraps and things um, to use to decorate with. Um, that I had, and of course we also have this piece, so we could also just um, cut a piece to layer on here to cover up the white if we wanted to. On my original, I did some book page and then I did a pretty um, patterned paper. So let me just see what I have. I think that bird is a little large um, and kind of covers up the, the flaps cover up his face anyway, so probably not what I want. Let me see. I've got different little pieces. Oh, this will be cute. Um, so what I did on the original one is I just lined it up, and I love the torn edge look, and I just tore... Um, tore it to make it fit. The reason I'm tearing both sides now is just, I was looking at the pattern of my paper, but you could measure, right? This, this is um, right at, you know, this is the eight centimeters. So you could cut a piece that's a smidge, not quite eight centimeters wide, and you could cut it to, you know, you know about, this is a four and a half centimeter um, flap. So again, just a teensy less than four and a half centimeters. Then you could round the corners. I'm just tearing mine and making sure it's gonna nestle in there. I wanna see more of the yellow, I think. Of course, that blue tag is cute too. Oh, la -dee da what am I gonna do? I think I'm just gonna tear once. So again, I'm using my pocket to help me see where I need to tear. Hopefully I got that about right. Yeah, I could have gone a smidge smaller, but it'll fit. And I'm gonna round the corners. And hopefully this is going to sit nice and snug right in there. Yeah, see how cute. 
So I'm going to ink it. And again, this, this part, however you choose to decorate yours, just have fun with it. Um, with whatever papers you have. It's also, if you're like me and you have extras from other kits that you've enjoyed using, or scrap of paper or whatever you have on hand, just go ahead and grab what you have. Ooh, I'm trying to manhandle this in. Um, all right. I did tear it a little bit, you know, smaller than eight centimeters, so I'm just gonna do some inking. I think it looks good. I do want something on the pocket, but I also want to put things inside my pocket. That's cute. So we will use this to go inside this pocket. I think it fits and that it'll still, I'm gonna to need to trim it just a touch. It's just a touch too tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim just the border that was on this little journaling card off. And if you wanna know the size that fit in here nicely, five and a half centimeters by seven centimeters if you wanna cut a little journaling card for yours. I'll ink it later. Okay. Um, and here's some little tags. So you've got a lot of real estate in here and, you know, it may end up making your folder a little chunky, but isn't that fun? I like chunky things. That one's a little too tall. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to tear this piece of paper and just make... Um, Make another little pocket like I did on the original one. I kind of want to see that flower there. So again, I am just going for it. I'm just going for it. And we'll have another little tuck spot on this one. All right. And I didn't put a notch and that's probably why I forgot this was a pocket but if you want to put a notch I'm just going to glue mine down on the three sides and make it into a little tuck little tuck pocket I am definitely in the you can't have too many pockets club so you have to tell me if you guys agree with that philosophy Oh, very cute, right? Very, very cute. Now, do I want something on this flap? Trying to decide. Ooh, I could put a word, and I definitely want to put a button or something on here to close it. I am going to grab just a little something to put in this pocket. I don't know if this will still be too tall. There we go. I just wanted a little something in the pocket. Okay. Maybe a strip across here. That's a little bit wider than what I want. So I'm gonna again do a torn, a torn edge for it. And you can cut yours if you don't like the torn edge kind of grungy look. That's up to you. There we go. Isn't that flower pretty? There's so many little pretty images on these papers. Okay. Oh, it was cute on the other side too. I obviously printed on both sides with that piece of paper. Okay. All right. So the, the larger pieces that I used on both of these, this is a fall paper kit that I'm just starting to work on and design. These are some of my test prints. So let me know if you like these, um, like those patterns and colors. Um, the pattern papers on both of these are just from various Pink Monarch print kits, which are always gorgeous, right? Okay, these were the vintage buttons that I used for this one. And I'm going to just use one of these um, again, because I think that kind of light green color uh, works really well. This was sewn onto the card, or not sewn on, held onto the card with one of these little wire pieces. 
that are sometimes hard to get out or off. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is sew on the button. I'll decide if I wanna put it up and center it like I did or if I wanna bring it down a little bit. I think of this one I'm gonna bring down just a touch. I think my needle whoa, is threaded already. I hope the string or the thread on here isn't too long and I don't end up with a mess on my hands. Let me close that up. Okay, so I just, again, eyeball about where I want it. You can mark the center if that makes you feel a little better. Gives you some more confidence. But sewing a button onto paper is basically the same concept as if you're sewing it on a you know, a piece of fabric. I will say you want to be careful um, not to pull too tight and tear the paper. I mean, it is still paper. I printed this on um, a 90 pound cardstock. So not super, super thick and not copy paper weight either. Um, it still folds nicely. Um, but you just want to be careful. And I usually, I doubled my thread and I usually go through, um, both on the holes at, le at least twice. Oops. Okay. And this is what I was saying is I hope I don't make a mess with having my thread too long. Let's see how that looks. That looks good to me. So, um, I'm going to just flip it over and tie it on the back and you can leave it just like this. I don't mind seeing the threads. Um, on this one, I did glue a circle just to cover it up and make sure everything was nice and secure. If you're concerned about it, um, you know, do that. You could, we could do another just strip across here and cover it up or you can just leave it. And I'm gonna just leave this one. Okay. I know I still have a big mess on here. I did like the idea of putting a little word on this one. Why don't we put, um, I'm gonna put peace. And I think these papers are from the August 2024 um, Pink Monarch print kit. If you're interested in any of those, they, they are available in their um, Etsy shop if it's after August of 2024. Yeah, that's going to be cute right there just to give it a little pizzazz. My original one had a little more pattern going on. Um, oh, I could have put a butterfly too. Look, you could just do so many things. All right, so let me do the closure. And again, I'm just using a really... Um, I think this is like one millimeter twine. And again, this is, if you're interested, linked in my Amazon storefront um, because it's one of my favorite products. And I am an Amazon affiliate, which means I do get a few pennies if you um, click on my link and then end up making a purchase. But no, no pressure at all. Um, you certainly do not that that's not why I do it. I do it to share with you guys some of the supplies I use. Okay, I'm just going to wrap it once and then twice and then come around. I think you guys saw I, I did tie it behind the button. Again, I was careful not to pull it too, too tight and rip the button off the paper. Um, so you just want to be gentle, you know, when you're sewing on paper. Um, I'm tying a knot on this end because I want to leave this one as well, and this helps me know which one to which one to pull on to unwrap. So we've got two pockets, and then the big expandable pocket that I can put all kinds of things in here. Now you did have this leftover piece of paper. Um, I'm gonna tuck it down in here. I used the leftover piece on this one to make this little card and then added a little flower to it. Um, and then I had a leftover piece of the pattern paper that I put down in here. So um, again, 
wouldn't this be a cute little um, gift card holder? It would be a cute, instead of a traditional greeting card, like for a birthday or thinking about you, and you could have a little letter or note inside. And of course, perfect to put inside junk journals or to tuck inside pockets. So there you go, in centimeters. I hope you guys like it. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about the videos I've been putting out there for you guys. Um, I appreciate everybody's support. And until next time, have a great day. Thanks.